All right, guys, welcome. Uh, I'm not big on intros in my uh, podcast, and normally I don't post my full podcast, but today for this podcast, I believe I'm going to post the full one. So to, to, uh, today I want to welcome Angie and Giddy. Together they created a business called Virtual Stages, and I believe they're helping coaches and consultants with, uh, with marketing, correct? Via virtual events, exactly. Yes. Can y'all uh, can y'all share a little bit about what that is? And sorry, I butchered it. I'm bad on intros. I'm gonna work <laughs> on that and get better and better. But yeah, now I'll I'll get started because it kind of wraps into our story a little bit, and that'll it'll make a little more sense. So a handful of years ago, I was sitting in a room of forty powerful local business women, and one woman that I'd never met before in my life, walked up to me and said, she actually said these words, call this a divine appointment. Go write your books, go write your workbooks and go get paid to speak. And at that time, like, I didn't even know that was a thing. This was just a handful of years ago. You know, and it, it was not even on my bucket list of anything to do. It was so foreign to me, that idea. And, but that interaction, I just couldn't get it out of my head. And so being smart enough, knowing that like if God takes shape and like looks me in the eyeball and says and gives me like this direct suggestion, I, I couldn't not take action because if nope. God's got my back, I can't fail. So um, for years, I tried to figure out how to get out of my own way to make this happen. Um, I was exploring the ins and outs of public speaking um, while I just jumped into speaking also, I was on physical stages of all sizes and uh, just exploring my place in this world of public speaking. And by following all the breadcrumbs, here I am on a mission to help business owners quantum leap their businesses using the power of the spoken word via virtual events. So, Gidi, share a little bit about you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Angie. It's so fascinating. Now, I used to work as a licensed psychologist and a college professor, so it, it was a bit different. But you know, COVID changed all of that because teaching, examinations, and therapy sessions, they all became quite difficult to do when COVID hit. Um, since then, I know we, we developed Zoom, but, but back then it, it was sort of like everything closed down, all my work sort of uh, closed down. And uh, being a single mom, which I am 24-7, uh, at that point, my daughter was 10 years old. And I also had to homeschool her because of COVID. So actually, I was at the same time trying to, to figure out new streams of income at the same time that I was homeschooling my daughter. Uh, and I had to figure out something which was more predictable than, you know, therapy sessions and uh, teaching because that had become somewhat uh, unpredictable during COVID. So I had to had to find uh, a new way for myself, actually, or for us, our family. So I, I went ahead and I searched the internet for solutions. And, you know, <laughs> there's so many things out there you can choose from. But I actually, I decided to become uh, what you might call a mompreneur. Uh, the reason being that I wanted to continue homeschooling my daughter because she, she thrived on that. She really likes it. Uh, so what I've done is I've I actually I created my own coaching program inside of marketing psychology, which is uh, what I work doing. And and I've also, together with Angie, uh, we founded the Elite Reach Virtual Stages. Uh, and here we help other business owners scale while actually working less so they can sort of also spend more time with their families because that's actually what, what I wanted to do. And that's why I, um, I yeah, started as an entrepreneur. Now at Elite Virtual Stages, we believe that you as a business owner shouldn't have to work so hard. We believe you should have lots of free time to do the things that are most important to you. You know, it could be like spending time with your family, with your friends, your clients, you know, just time for you doing the things that are most important to you, actually. So, so yeah, that's why we ended up founding it. 
as y'all as y'all can see, I'm not the greatest speaker there is. So for someone like <laughs> me whose skills need tons and tons of improving, who's trying to get their clients, who's trying to get their messaging in front of their clients, how how could y'all help help like the individuals like me? Um, yeah, so we work with a lot of influencers and people that have an audience or building an audience. You know, they've got a message. Um, uh, typically a high ticket offer makes this whole thing work really well. And it's all wrapped up in, uh, you know, by hosting these transformational virtual events um, using a, a seven figure framework that we developed. And it's actually the same framework that, you know, Russell Brunson. I do know Russell Brunson. Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Russell Brunson uses this exact framework to do nine figure days. So <laughs> it's the same fig framework that we use. And, you know, so we just do most of the heavy lifting for someone like yourself. So they, all you have to do is show up and shine. And we provide all, you know, the training necessary to get you to that point. So exactly. you're yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're take so for you're you're basically working with someone high ticket. They they already have their product, and you're working on getting their audience inside of a a, a virtual event, basically, and then Correct. in there helping them craft their message, helping them speak to the pain points and things like that, so that they can convert more deals. Exactly. So we have uh, the seven figure framework that has four pillars. Do you mind if I share the four pillars? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, just very quickly, there's four pillars. We help, you know, someone like yourself, Marcos, we help you decide, make those critical decisions. Um, and then once you decide, then we help you fill the event. And then once you've got the event filled, now you got to host it. And then after the event is hosted, then what do you do? Like those are the four pillars. You decide, make some critical decisions, get it filled, get it hosted, and then and then take them to the next step. So it, as a high overarching overview, that's the four pillar framework. Do do we have time to go into detail? We can go into go in as some much detail as possible. Yes, we have we have plenty. Okay. Yes. All right, we uh, buckle in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So pillar number one, um, and again, it's we keep this as simple as possible because the whole thing can get overwhelming quick. <laughs> so there's very, there's three critical questions, and if you're if you have pen and paper, write these down. You're going to want to know these. It, all you have to do is answer these three questions to start with. First of all, you need to pick a date. Decide the exact day and time that you're going to host your event. And you know how many people like, <laughs> they, they won't make that one decision. They're like, oh, someday, or I'm not ready. Like maybe, you know, I ask them next week, like that right there, just decide what day, what time done. Number two is now what are you going to call your event? You know, decide on a name for your event. Um, and, you know, it, we suggest, here's a pro tip. You put the word live at the end of it. So it could be, um, uh, Marcos Marketing Live, or you know, I, come up with some name. You know, speaking to the results of the event would be great. Um, that you'll be, decide, just decide what's the event name going to be. More importantly, well, all these are important, but number three is now you need to decide what is it that's unique about your event, and how is that event going to improve the attendees' lives. That that's another couple, there's kind of a few decisions in there, but those are the basic three, what day, what is it called? And what's that unique transformation that you're going to give them? What's that result? So that's pillar number one is decide. And those are three good questions to start with. Um, are you ready for pillar number two? Pillar number two. All right. Pen and paper ready. <laughs> All right. So now how do you fill your event? And um, a thing to remember here, it's not necessarily how, how do you do this? It's who. <laughs> it, write down the word who, W-H-O, who. Who do you know? So um, number one, 
reach out to your buyer list. You already have people buying your high ticket products right now. You ha might have followers. Just make that list and invite them to the event because you've already made the decisions. Yep. You know, when, what, and, and why, you know, this, the first decisions. So now it's reach out to the buyers list and tell them, you know, what, you know, you're excited about this event you're having, what makes it unique about it, and do you want to join us? And so then number two would be uh, another way to fill your event would be to call in favors from colleagues. Again, who, not how. Talk to your colleagues um, that have your audience. They've already got your audience and maybe at, ideally they're not obviously not a competitor, but they've got your audience and they're serving that audience in a different way. And you come in with your skills um, and ask them, say, hey, I'm doing this event. I think it would add value to your audience. And just write one to three emails for them to for them to send to their email list and just, you know, ask your colleagues, would you mind sending these emails to help promote my event? Because I really think it'll serve your audience. And you, you can get as creative as you want with that, you know, social media posts and whatever, like just call in favors from colleagues. So that's number two. So number one was, you know, your initial buyers list and followers. Number two, your colleagues. How else can you fill your event? Um, you could actually create a free training that adds value to uh, you, you know, JV partners, you know, find people out there, again, those same colleagues that have your audience and, and just say, hey, you know, thanks for emailing for me. Hey, would, do you want to do an event with me? Like I could do a free training, bring all your people. And then at the end of that, you invite them to your event. So that's the third way that uh, it's a, so it's a free training. That's the third way to get people to, um, to fill your event. And so it's like little mini events to fill your big event. And then number four is, you know, even if, you know, because so there's going to be some of you out there thinking, well, I don't have an audience. Um, you know, I don't have any colleagues or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this won't work um, for me because, like I said, I don't have a big audience, things like that. Right, right, right. Um, so what's really cool is we put together a free, because actually the fill the event is that this is the biggest objection we get. Everyone's like, I don't have, you know, I don't have all these people or audience or whatever. So what we did at the end of the call, we'll, um, we're going to be gifting your listeners a really cool free gift that answers this exact question. Like, yeah. I don't have an audience, so what do I do? So we'll talk watch, about that yeah, in just a bit. Yeah, watch the full video because there will be a gift at the end of this video. I should have said that at the beginning. But there, <laughs> there will be a video. Keep watching. Don't stop. There will be a gift at the end of the video. I love it. Yeah. And so just, and remember it's who, not how. That's such a big thing to remember because there are so many people out there that already have your audience and you just got to find those and connect with them, make friends, have fun and create some magic. So that's, um, that's pillar number two. So pillar one, decide. Pillar two, fill your event. And Gidi, why don't you talk about pillar three? Exactly. So that now we get to the structure of what you're going to say at your event, actually. You know, the speaking and the transformational part. So let's start out by talking about how to speak at your event. Now, would it be okay if we just over deliver and share the good stuff that our clients usually pay money for us to share? Is that okay, Marcus? No, yes, no. I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm not going to give away. You got to pay me my money and if I'm going to share my stuff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay now it's important to remember that, that you only got a very short of amount of time actually to grab your audience attention uh, when you're on social media so you 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 got to make sure that you grab it really fast and there's actually three short rules for doing that the one would be to be engaging and it's not like you engage at the beginning and then again at the end nope you keep engaging all the time constantly every minute perhaps even several times a minute uh you know like like like, like preachers in in uh, so some preachers are so good at preaching and they keep engaging people you know um and exactly that's sort of what you need to do you just need to do it as a business owner does it make sense 
that makes sense because my preacher could talk for hours and I'm like, how does this guy speaking with no, <laughs> he, he has like maybe like a one page note, but he spoke for like over two hours. And I'm like looking at the clock ready to go. And, but this guy's like on and on and on and on. <laughs> I try to say one YouTube video script and it's like a minute and I'm like, okay, that's all I had to say. So I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, to develop a preacher speaking mentality would be perfect. Like, yeah, exactly. Because awesome. I want to amplify you keep something. Real quick. Me. Sorry, Angie. Yeah. I, yeah, I wanted to amplify something really quick because what Gidi just said about being engaging that was a massive tip. She just kind of flew right past it. I just wanted to amplify it a little bit because <laughs> um, what, what are the stats, Gidi? I think it's. Um, you know, like um, some of the best speakers in the world, is it every like eight to 10 seconds, they're getting mm -hmm. the audience to interact yes. in some way, get a nod uh, or a grunt or something Th that often, like it's, that's a skill like that, that comes Speak with years yeah. of training. Speaking yeah. of engagement, if you're watching this video, hit the like and subscribe button. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Perfect example. <laughs> love that. Okay, engaging, and the next thing is actually be relatable, because you know a lot of people they they spend so much time talking about themselves, about their company, about their products. They don't talk about the people, the audience who's listening. So you gotta be relatable. You you gotta grab people's attention. They gotta feel that you're actually there for them. You're talking to them. Um, you know, ways to do that is actually also using emotions and storytelling. Like when when you actually engage people by engaging their emotions, they remember things better. So. Be relatable. This is super, super important, actually. And the last thing we want to share is create a transformation. The point being that we see a lot of people out there who are doing events, and it's not that they're super bad or anything. It's not that, but they're giving so much information. They're not creating the transformation. And if you give people only information, the transformation will never happen. You need to actually go beyond the information stage and create that transformation. And the way you create the transformation is the way you speak. Another way to put it is that creating a transformation for your audience at your virtual event, it actually means that your participants, they come into your event as one person, and when they leave your event, they're actually leaving as another person. Mm. The reason being that what's happening is actually an identity sh sh shift. So they come in as one identity and they leave your event with another identity because of the transformation you created at the event which you're speaking. This is so crucial because the mindset that has taken people so far will only take them so far. They're not going to take people to the next step. They're not going to help them level up to the next step. So you have to have this mindset transformation in order to go to the next level. So the way you do that is by actually challenging their current beliefs. You inspire them with new ideas and perspectives. And you just, you just need to push them a little so they actually end up leveling up. You know, if, if, if you're wondering, and I would be if I was listening to this. I was like, hey, don't you get any examples to how to do that? Sure. Um, ways to do that is um, like if, if, if you're coaching moms, you'd want them to realize that in order to be there for their family, they have to take care of themselves first. Because otherwise, they won't be able to do that. Or it could be like you. Marcus, they could be doing Facebook ads. So you would need your audience to realize that, hey, it's okay to invest in Facebook ads. Yeah, they cost money, but the money I get in return, it's actually worth that investment. So you need to create that mindset shift because otherwise they're not going to want to take the next step with you. 
So mindset, I can't really overemphasize it. Uh, it's so crucial, actually, to, to, to the event. Do you want to add to that, Angie, before we I go on to the next step? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> well, we could talk more about hosting, um, or we can move on to Pillar 4. Uh, that was powerful. Um, Go for, was, four, go for four? No, no, no. I'm saying uh, that was powerful. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, the mindset. So an identity shift, you know, like so even like for, for this interview right now, you know, someone, you know, jumping in to listen, you know, they're coming into just using it as an example. They're coming in not knowing anything about virtual events and how to do one and do I need one. And so the goal at the end of this interview is to give you enough meat and ideas and get your brain going so that you come out of this interview going, huh, you know, that's interesting. Maybe I can, you know, that might work for my business, you know, and so you've shifted from, from, you know, not, you know, like being unavailable for virtual events to being available to, you know what, Mm -hmm. that's an option now. (laughs) So it's an identity shift and it's a, There's an awareness oh. to it and there's a mindset to it. Yeah. Are you are you familiar with Sam Ovens? Have you heard of I yeah, I know the name. Cuz I take I took one of his courses and what y'all mentioned is uh where y'all taking you like who you are now is not going to be the the same person that's going to be able to accomplish this so accomplish mm. your goal. So the fact that you're you're helping these people take their customers to the next level, some people might not be able to do that like they might not know how to to perfect that, so that's that's cool that you are doing that. Yeah, Thank and you. there's there's very specific formulas we use that you know help um, in that transition. You know, with uh, you know just talking mm-hmm. about you know what's the cause everyone like like Edie was saying, everyone wants to give info, give info, give info. But how about um, remembering why they're there? <laughs> What yep. are the results they're coming for? And mm-hmm. are you actually providing that in the event? And what's really cool while you're hosting the event, it's interactive. So you are feeding off the audience during the event and you can pivot. Eventually we get you there um, where you can pivot and like, okay, the people that showed up today, I thought maybe they'd want this, but they actually want this other thing. And it's, it, it what a great way to get like for an ask campaign, just get them in a room and start asking them, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you know, how is this landing? And you get immediate interaction. You get your answers. Um, it's brilliant on so many different levels and it becomes a lot of fun when you can switch that fun hat on. <laughs> yeah. Some people it's like terrifying to get on, you know, you know, any kind of stage. Um, so we help, we help, put that fun hat on because it's so important just to be authentic and fun. And Marcos, you're going to do fantastic with any events. You yeah. do you're, you're so authentic. You're so fun. Appreciate um, it. And that's absolutely like that, that alone, it's going to draw your audience to you naturally in all the work that you're doing with, you know, different ads and things that you do. Um, and then you get them all in, yeah, they're going to fall in love with you wherever you show up that you get them all in a room and, you know, and then it's just magic as you interact with them and find like really because because you've got time with them in this room and you can really ask the questions right there. And um, people love that. People love to be heard. And that's a it's a whole process of being on stage talking. But then also someone needs to be in the chat, monitoring chat. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like this whole teamwork thing that because just one person alone it can do it and it, it looks like sometimes people are doing it by themselves but there's so, <laughs> there's so much behind the scenes happening to make it really fly well um that's part of a big part of what we do yeah most of the time yeah. we're just seeing like the speakers so we don't really see yes. what goes on yeah, behind the scenes. But exactly. i agree like it does take a team to to make something big happen and if you're selling high mm-hmm. ticket you need a team behind you you don't want to be just stuck like trying to do all this yourself and then like something messes up and now you got to fix it. And then like people are waiting behind the screen for you to speak or say something and you're over here troubleshooting. Like you don't want that. It's no, that's a hot mess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it happen, but it's a hot mess. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. 
So, so I just wanted to to talk about the application process because okay. that's another thing. Is that okay? Yes, go ahead. Perfect. I was actually because, gonna. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we we also do that a little differently. Okay, so you created the transformation. Okay. And the next step that would be getting people to to apply to 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 join your program. Now this is super easy actually. It's because at the event you know you actually created that transformation, so you don't have to hard sell people. You don't have to pitch. Actually, we like to call it this makes sales a mere formality. So. At the end of your event, all you have to do is just extend an invitation saying, if you'd like to work with us, is it okay if I just share a little bit of how, how you could work with us? Um, we call this the no pitch pitch because you're not selling people. You're just telling them, inviting them to join you on the next step if they're interested in doing that. So it's 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 very you have to actually lean out and not not try to sell at all. So it's I know a lot of people they don't like selling. They think it's sleazy and it's like it's like in our culture it's uh, a lot of the villains they are I don't know salesmen who are trying to sell people things that they don't need or whatever. It's it's, it's like some some cultural thing. So a lot of uh, a lot of us, I had that thing at one point of time anyways. I didn't like to sell. I thought it was sleazy and I did all I could to avoid doing it. So being able to do it like this, not selling, selling, but just extending an invitation, it feels so nice. So yeah, anybody can do that. It's it's not sleazy at all. It's a skill that can be developed, absolutely. Exactly, exactly. How many years and, have y'all been uh, working on this together? Oh, goodness. Yeah. So Gidi and I just joined up recently within the last year, I think it was, okay. Gidi. So, yeah. So we've been we've been working in the, individually until recently. And we just, yeah, it's such a, there's so much that goes on in this that it's way more fun to have a good business partner to to play along with and and then you guys as the you know as the clients you know you get both of us which is really brilliant two for one yeah two for one yeah two exactly. for one yeah yeah we decided to join forces for yeah about a year ago yeah i think joining i think yeah i think joining forces is powerful a powerful like smart powerful not only are you like if you find the right person which I've, i believe you have then Two people focused on the same vision are going to go fa faster speed. And uh, mm -hmm. can y'all share some? Uh, I know you can't share some of the clients you've worked with, but like, if you can, is do you all have like a transformation y'all have done with the client? If y'all can share that, sure. You want to speak to that, Gidi? Yeah, sure. Um, I could talk about a client we work with. Um, she actually she, she she hadn't done a virtual event before when 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 she joined us and um she was so nervous about it uh do you know who i'm talking about angie yeah yeah okay she she was really nervous about it and um you know she actually you know <laughs> her first pillow when you decide on a date she kept postponing deciding on a date um Eventually, we got her to decide on that date and name the event and and just get started. And afterwards, she was she, she was really happy about it. First of all, because well, she did a virtual event. She ended up doing it, and she got new customers, which is obviously always great. From her but first event, even which was even awesome. Even at her first event, exactly. And what what. It was even better actually for her. Uh, she she expressed that she experienced such a um, an increase actually in her confidence level because she'd been able, you know, to step out of her comfort zone and actually do the virtual event which she had feared so much doing. Um, and Angie, I know you and me we talked a lot about uh, her afterwards, 
And we saw such a huge growth, actually. It was tremendous in her competencies because, you know, at the first event, which was, we call it a pop-up, you know, where you test things and just try uh, for the first time, um, she had a conversion rate of about 3%, which isn't exactly, or oh, 4%, I think it was, it, which isn't exactly amazing. But, you know, at the second event, when we tweaked everything and made it all better and she had gotten better and more confident at speaking her conversion rate uh, to apply to work with her actually it went to 33 percent so wow. yeah that was no, that's quite a big increase yeah so yeah, and now she's gone on to host multiple events um she's even translated her skills into other types of workshops and live events as well so it's just really fun to see the transformation in just a short amount of time because yeah. it, usually it's that first one they're just so afraid like oh my gosh because they don't know what they don't know and it, if so we just encourage them trust the process it's just again back to that first pillar make those decisions they they seem simple but people drag their feet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's our job to help them and what's really brilliant you know on that particular well in all of all of all the clients that we work with right after the event we like to get on a, a phone call with them like as soon as possible after the event and hash through what went right what didn't go well like what should we change next time like well it's fresh in our brain and like how valuable is that to have somebody in your corner that can help you make those decisions on what do we shift and do next to make it thrive. And she was coachable enough to get that big conversion jump for herself. And that's and, also um, impressive. And one thing that I see with these virtual events is once it's done, if y'all record it, you can create this into an auto webinar that absolutely on and on and on and yeah. on. If it, if you, especially if it gets a good conversion rate, you turn it into an auto, auto webinar and it's just going to go on and on and on and, and keep pr producing results. But the biggest it's, thing where, I, where especially where y'all going to come in and help people is speaking. If you can't speak, you can't, you can't, that's, I think that's the 99% of the thing is if you're, if people know you're not confident, like the spe the speaker y'all helped, if she's not confident, her audience is going to spot that like immediately. Mm. If her messaging is off, she's not really taking them through that transformation. She's going to have to hard sell people, which is obviously hard to do. So I, I love what y'all do. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's Thank really you. brilliant. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. So what should yeah. uh, uh are, wait, I'm a, are y'all done with the this current? Well, th with that was that was pillar number three. Oh, okay. How about we, you want pillar number four? Yes. Okay. I, I, actually, Angie, I, I just wanted to mention one thing. Is it okay if I mention one thing? Yeah, there's more to the hosting. Perfect, he wants to share, so go for it. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to go a bit into uh, wh why you need an, an, an MC at your event. And of course, it could be us, but it could also be uh, somebody you know. Um, yeah. Okay. So... The answer is that um, the MC, you, you know, you, you're going to be focused at speaking at your event. So you can't focus on all the comments that are happening in the chat. You can't read the chat and comment on that. And it's it can be sort of difficult for you to pick up on what's happening in the chat. So you need an MC to do that. And you also need an MC to actually um, make you look good. So... That's sort of the two rules that the MC has. He or she is um, the one who's going to make you look good, make you shine on your virtual stage. And it's also the person who's going to be the voice of the audience, making sure that their answers, their questions, sorry, the questions are answered, because otherwise they're going to end up having a lot of objections. Mm. And if you don't know, what those objections are if you don't even know that they are there. You're not going to be able to answer them. You're not going to be able to solve them. And when you don't do that, people will end up at the event just sitting with those objections and that's going to hold them back from wanting to, to move to the next step with you. So it's really important that you have somebody to 
uh, function as an MC for you. Now it could be, it could be just uh, a colleague, it could be a business partner. Um, yeah, it's just, you just need somebody to be there actually on the screen with you. And yes, uh, we actually, we, we do that for our clients. We, we actually, we share the stage with them, uh, helping them look good. So yes. And facilitation is a skill. Like it is not just anybody can facilitate. You've been to meetings where, you know, someone just comes up on stage and says, um, uh, yeah, yo, thanks for being here. And <laughs> um, yeah, our speaker is blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, you know, everybody clap. You know, there's an art to it on so many levels that MC is very important to be able to read the audience and that MC is that liaison between what's happening in the audience and what's happening in the speaker's brain because there's so much going on that that MC can come in and speak as the audience and just say, okay, hang on, Marcos, uh, let me clarify something you just said. Um, yeah, it, and and because you probably had no idea that the the chat is like, what's he talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's what the MC does is jump in and and uh, be able to do that dance with you. And so it's a skill. It's a definite skill. All right. And then so that's so those those are the first three pillars to make some decisions, fill the event, host the event. Pillar number four. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. Get your make sure you still have your notepads out. Jump roll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so pillar number four is post event. What happens? You know, the event is done. Now what? You know, you guys all click the the log off button off of Zoom or wherever you're at, and you know, okay. So what's next? So at the event, you're offered a chance, an invitation to fill out an application. So then after the event, you look through the applications and you convert them into sales calls. So you reach out to them, you know, however you have it set up and get them in your calendar and talk to them. Ideally, like here's pro tip within 24 to 48 hours after the event, you want them on the phone because they are in a heightened emotional state. Like they just, you know, this, like whenever you go to a concert or whatever, like, yep. yeah, you know, the first 24 hours you're like jacked and, <laughs> and, <laughs> but you know, and then Monday rolls around and you know, the feeling's gone. You know, it's the same thing. Talk to them while it's still fresh in their mind and their heart. Um, you just you just brought them to that transformation. It's so easy for them to remember on Monday. Oh yeah, I decided to do a virtual event, but then I forgot. <laughs> um, so many distractions so nowadays it, in the world. If you wait, oh my god, an hour might be too long. Uh, exactly, exactly. They're off to the next thing. So, um, but. What's neat with these virtual events is we typically, and I don't think we mentioned this, we like to start them off at a four hour event. And, it, and as a speaker, don't let that freak you out. I got freaked because, out. I, I did. When you yeah, said four hours, I was like, okay. We make it, yeah. So a webinar is quick, like an hour, 90 minutes, like you're in and out. It's really salesy. This is more transformational. Like you're really getting in to the hearts and minds of the people. So by the end of the four hours goes like that, no joke. Like you think it's long and um, it's, it's just like that. It's because it's so interactive. It's so engaging. And the ones that are hearing your voice and they're getting it, they put the application in, you get them on a call. And so that's one of the, you know, so number one, who's going to take those calls? So that's a decision you need to make is how, what is that going to look like? And then like, you know, it could be yourself, it could be your team, you know, in our case, you know, for people that hire us, we take care of that. Um, and then what do you say when you're on the sales calls? You know, and it, it, what's brilliant with this is you don't, it's not a sales call. It, you're, it's literally, you know, hey, wasn't that an awesome event? Thanks for coming. Like what credit card are you gonna use to get started today? Like it's mm. that simple. Thanks. And you know, they have a few questions, you know, because in the event, you've answered all their questions. And if not, they're getting on the phone to get some clarity. But ideally, all their questions were answered at the event. So the people that are on these application calls are hot, ready, they're buyers. And um, that's what's brilliant with this. And so it makes sales a mere formality 
because you, they've already decided at the event. You just got to make it official. That's why 24 to 48 hours, get them on the phone. <laughs> Ideally, you know, right after the event, you know, they're on the phone with you. However it works out. Um, and, if, you know, when you've done that transformational journey during the event, they'll, it's in their heart. It's in their heart. Um, and, and all you're doing on the call is just, you know, all right, what credit card do you want to use? You know, ACH, all right. You know, without, however, pay, however you take payments, just make it official. Um, and, and that's it. You know, who's going to take the call? What are you going to say on the call? And, and how do you, you know, what form of currency you're going to pay for, <laughs> pay with this? So, um, and if you want to add any of that, Didi? I think that's. I, I was just gonna say it's 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 really it's it's so easy. It, it it couldn't be easier because you 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 done all the work actually when you did the event. So it's smooth sailing from from there. I'll mm -hmm. say that I've been on a similar event. I'm not sure if y'all are the ones behind the scenes on this, but I watched the full thing. I went through like a transformational type. I was like, man, I really need this. By the end of the video slash event like webinar. I was buying before I even got onto a call. So <laughs> I know that these are how powerful these can be. Like if these events are run correctly, you can, you can sell these people without even having them jump on a call. Exactly. Thanks. Yes. And that's the type of thing we discuss through this whole process. Cause everyone's business is unique and how this plays out specifically that we have a very particular framework that we just, you know, we just share like a brief overview of all of it. Um, you know, you could literally take what we just shared with you and go, you know, try this on your own mm, and yeah, uh, you do very well. We gave you some massively pro tips there. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, there's a lot of value in here. Is this just for coaches and consultants? That's my question. No, nope. Absol absolutely not. Go ahead, Gidi. <laughs> it, it doesn't depend so much on, on the industry you're in. What really matters is that you have um, an offer. A converting offer, uh, preferably, uh, which is high ticket. High ticket would be plus five thousand dollars, I would say. And you need some kind of an audience, and you know we help you get the audience. So, so that's probably not going to be a problem. And we can even help you build your offer, or we can help you uh, tweak your offer so you can raise the price. So you that wouldn't be a problem either. So a good referral for us would be like, for example, influencers, um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube, wherever. Um, so they've got a loyal, engaged following. That that would be that would be key if they've got an engaged following, and you know, someone who's great on camera. They don't have to be. You know, we can. All these things are learnable. Um, um, but. An influencer that's great at building audiences would be a great fit for this. If they've never used a virtual event to grow their business yet, and they've got that kind of an audience, yeehaw, like this is a perfect match if they're ready to scale. And then another good referral would could be business owners such as, like this is done a lot in real estate, finance, investment. You'll see a lot of these type of events. Um, they've already got the high converting um, high ticket offer yep. and they do, they're used to doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls typically to close sales. And maybe they've never considered speaking one to many. And that's why you see more. I don't know if you've ever pay attention to that market, but there's a lot of these type of events going on in that marketplace. Um, and maybe it's a business owner that has tried virtual events and they mm -hmm. failed. <laughs> like they just couldn't figure it out. And it's just because they didn't have the right framework. Or the um, right team. And they're they, doing it by themselves, most likely. They're trying to do this. Most likely. Everything most likely. Themselves, and it's a lot. Like you, you mentioned a lot that goes into this. So I could imagine if I was doing this by myself, I'd be like, oh, man, like just so much going into this. The frustration would just be <laughs> agitating me. Yep. Exactly. And we didn't even talk tech. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There, yeah, no, it's it's really cool. Yeah, and so for for consultants, authors, course creators, other experts, you know, they typically have a large engaged audience as well, and typically a, a high ticket offer. And so anyone that's already got a high ticket offer and they're not using virtual events, would be a perfect perfect match yeah. for this. Perfect. Well, this honestly, this was great. 
I've enjoyed this a lot. What should people do next? All right. Okay, Marcos. Um, is it all right if we share a free gift that we have to help your audience fill their events? Yes. Because that's like the number one objection I'm we ready. get. I'm like, ready. oh my God, I'm ready. I don't have an audience. How might, you know, is anyone even going to show up? You know, how do I get people there? Like, okay. So because filling events is the number one objection we get, we created a really ninja blueprint to help you fill your event to answer all their questions about filling events. And it's super cool. It's super cool. Um, it's a five step process that we literally walk you with you hand by hand in audio form, giving you step-by-step -step instructions. You listen to the audio, you go do the work, you come back on and through it, you even have an opportunity to get on a call with us and our team to get professional feedback on, you know, on the way as you're filling this out and figuring out, you know, how do I get this audience? Um, it's super slick. I, we're, we're very excited to be able to, it's like massive value. <laughs> so it, hey, how um, much is it going to cost them? This is free for today ah. for your audience. Like this is not something that, and this is something our clients get when they hire us. Okay. So we're giving this little piece of it to your audience for free, if that's okay. Yes, no, it's perfect. For, uh, I do have a question just today. So they have to get the access today after today. They don't get it. Or do I, can I put on my YouTube channel whenever they see the, no, this, yeah. Um, no, well, the link will be live for, for any time they watch this. Yeah. This is evergreen. This will be evergreen. Yeah. For yeah. Coach consultant and got a high ticket product, high ticket offer, a business owner that can benefit from virtual event speaking. You've watched the full video. We now have a giveaway for you. Free, doesn't cost you a penny. Everyone loves free, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to get that, um, so that you can, you'll create, you know, sales needs to be a mere formality. So if any of this spoke to you today, um, open up a tab on your browser right now. Just get it, do it now. That's, that's one of our big things. Just make that decision, do it now, open the tab on your browser and type in, um, elite virtual stages.com forward slash fill. I'll spell it out. It's E L I T E, uh, virtual V I R T U A L stages, plural S T A G E S.com forward slash fill or check the show notes. We'll have the link in there somewhere. And when you go to that link, um, just follow along and uh, yeah, make sure you opt in and you have to whitelist our emails uh, and, and then just follow the steps. And we would be honored to see your events shine. That's, we just, we, huh. we really, we just love the power of the spoken word. And when you can harness that, and it's a skill, it is a skill you can learn. You can, yes. And to have, you know, we are, part of our core values is faith, family, and fun. So we like to have fun. If, if we vibe with you at all, grab our free gift. And um, yeah. yeah. And uh, anything you want to add on that, Katie? Um, no. I don't think so. Um, yeah. We we're so happy to be here today, um, Marcus. Uh, such a great opportunity, and um, yeah. <laughs> this was this was very amazing. I can see. I literally can see myself on one of y'all's virtual events in the in the near future. Hundred percent. I'm like walking in. Like, here I come in. Yeehaw! Buckle in, Marcos is coming. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Showtime. Yeah, this, is, this, this one strategy just can make the biggest difference for it's, it's already making the biggest difference for businesses all over the world right now. Like you're seeing it, uh, you know, Tony Robbins, you know, Russell Brunson, like you're, you know, your inbox, you know, people are doing events. Not so Why not many. you? Yeah. Yeah. Now that you know <laughs> the secrets, you know, the high level secrets here, um, it's so powerful. So if any of this spoke to you, um, um, 
you know, again, thanks for listening. Marcos, thanks for having us. Go to elitevirtualstages.com forward slash Phil. And um, we are excited to see you on the other side. Appreciate yes. y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining in. Uh, and I hope to have y'all back next year. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We'd love to. Yeah, yeah. sure.